Tensac Start is the latest full stack React framework. Think about Next.js, but client side first, and powered by the amazing developer experience offered by Tensac Router. What we're gonna do today is to set up our first project step by step. I'm Leonardo, and this channel is about learning web development through open source. Don't forget to subscribe and let's begin. The first step will be to create an empty folder. Let's call it Tanstack Start Demo and let's get into the folder. The next instruction is to init with npm in order to create our first package.json. And with that, it's already time to open VS Code on this very folder. Let's begin our configuration. The first file will be a tsconfig.json as obviously everything will be powered by TypeScript. And by the way, if you see me pasting some code, don't worry, I'm just following the Tanstack Star documentation so you can find basically everything already here. But let's continue with our manual process. And the next step will be to start with the dependencies. Let's begin with obviously Tanstack Start, that is powered by React Router under the hood from Tanstack, obviously, and Vinci, that is basically the framework allowing Start to use client side and server side functions and also some typings with the VJS plugin React, because I didn't mention, but Vinci is actually using Vite under the hood. And the last thing we may want to install is something still related to TypeScript and some other types. Let's run npm install again. And with that, our package.json will basically have all the dependencies we're gonna need. The only manual changes we have to do here is to set type to module. And since this script is just the empty one from npm init, we're gonna replace it with the script coming from Vinci. As I mentioned, it is using Vite under the hood, so the experience will be exactly the same as running Vite dev, Vite build, and Vite start, but it's gonna use Vinci. And the very last step we need to configure our application is to create an app.config.ts, and this will basically be the entry point for all your custom configs. And just to give you an example, here you can give something to React, to the server, to the vid config, but we're not gonna need any special config for now. We can just leave it empty. And in case you were wondering why there isn't a CLI doing all of that in one command, well, there are gonna be one, but for now I think it's also valuable to do these steps one by one to get better knowledge of how parts are moving and trust me, this is gonna be really useful when you're going to catch some nasty bugs. And with that sorted out, let's begin to create our app folder and we can now start writing our application code with the first one being our router.tsx file. And we can paste this code from the docs. Here you can already see that there is an error here because this file is not anywhere in the code. But if you follow my Tanstack router tutorial, you can find all the videos in my channel you should be pretty familiar with this file. And in any case, we're gonna let Tanstack Router auto-generate this file later in this video. So let's continue exploring the setup. And here we can see that we're creating our router, basically starting from the route tree that will be auto-generated. And we're passing the output, the return type to this interface. And this will enable type safety across the entire application. And this is powered by Tanstack Router. But let's move on to the second file in our app folder. That will be server-side rendering.tsx. And this will be the entry point for routes in our server. And in case you were wondering, yes, the next file will be, unsurprisingly, client.tsx. And this time, this is the entry point for the client. You can see the hydrate root function that takes the document and injects the start client component. As always, using the create router we defined here. And with that, the app folder is also complete and we can finally start using the routes folder to define the route of our application. And again, if you're familiar with Tanstack Start, you know that the first route is double underscore root.tsx. And once again, we can paste the code right from the documentation. Let's have a close look first. Here we're creating our root route. This is nothing new, exactly the function from Tanstack Router, but here we can pass the head tag and also the component. The component will be our root component that basically is the HTML entry point where you can put all the content of your application that will be rendered here in the outlet inside our root. So let's render our home page that will be obviously index.tsx and paste some code here. This is again a simple file route with its path and a component that is home. But we still have an error here and also another error there. So it's definitely time to let the route tree to be generated by the CLI. And with that, I can simply type npm run dev and you will see that Tanstack Router will run the generation process. And now the file is here. 
this is the route that are auto-generated. You basically don't need to look at this file most of the time. Uh, with that, this error magically disappeared because this file is now existing and the types are now currently inferred. And with that, actually, we should also go to the browser and this should be the result. We now have an add one button that does nothing, but this is your very first TimeStock Start application. And if you're not satisfied, well, let's try to put some logic here. But not client-side logic, we're gonna start super fast with our first server function. And let's put it inside a new file called functions.ts, but you can really put them anywhere in your code. You could even put them here. But let's do that step by step. Let's imagine we have a database that this time will basically be a count.txt file and we have a function to read the file. But we want our client to be able to get the value from this file. So let's write our function that will be get count and we can use the create server function primitive and also if we want we can optionally specify the method which is gonna be get. With that we're creating our first server function but we want to execute some code, right? So we can specify a handler, which this time can be as easy as just doing return read count and that's basically it. This function is gonna be executed on the server and the client will basically call an HTTP endpoint and get the result. But where is the right place to read the data? In this case, we can use an API from Tanstack router that is the loader API. And here, when the route is loader, we can specify an async function that is gonna be run, which unsurprisingly will be our get count we just defined on the other file. But how can we read the result of this function? Here we can define a const called state if you want, which will be route loader data. And in this case, you can already see that state is a number. And how does he know it's a number? The return value of loader is promise of a number, and this is inferred automatically by our get count. So we didn't really need to specify any type, and we already know that state is gonna be a number. But does it work? Well, let's give it a try. I can add my state here. So add one to state, and if I go on the browser, I'm gonna see zero. But yeah, zero is pretty easy. It, it might be the default value. So if you don't trust me, I can create a file called count.txt. I can assign the value of 42. But now you might say, well, okay, cool. This is a number, but I want to do something when I click the button. Let's do it. We can go back to our functions file and create a new one that is gonna be update count. This time we can specify that the method is gonna be post. Now we want to not update by one, but let the user decide how many the increment is gonna be. So first we want to write a validator that is gonna specify that our input is gonna be a number. And here we're just assuming it's a number and using it straight away. But here you can in fact add your validation logic to make sure that the object that is being passed is exactly the shape you wanted it to be. And right after that, we can again use our handler. And this time when we define the function, we have an object here called data that well, as soon as I define the function, unsurprisingly, will be a number. Exactly the payload we defined here. We can read our count, that we can do that by just awaiting the read count function and making sure that this is an async function, obviously. And with that, we can simply write again the file with the current count plus the data, the increment we wanted to specify back to our page and add some logic here to make sure that the counter is incremented. And it's really as simple as calling the update function we defined on the other file and that's it. Here as a developer you're only specified that this button on click calls a function but in fact if you go on the browser and open the network tab you're gonna notice that every time I click on this button it's not just executing a function here in the browser but it is in fact triggering a post to our backend and this is the payload we specified. But here it doesn't update and if I refresh the page, the value is now updated. So how can we make sure that the value is also updated on the client? And this is really a matter of invalidating the result we received here. Doing that is pretty straightforward. First, we can get access to our router with the simple hook use router, again from Tastack router. And then the function we have to call is router.invalidate that will invalidate the route and its loader. 
Now, this is an async function because it's actually triggering a call to our backend. And well, we can simply solve that by changing the method only after the call has been performed. And with this simple change, if I go to the browser and I click, you see that the counter is increased by two every time. And here I'm calling two functions, the first post to update the data and the second get to basically get our result. But what if the first function already returned the data? Well, this is something that is being currently worked on and single flag mutations will be soon available into the server functions. But there's a lot more to learn about the full potential of Tanstack Start. And that's why you should definitely subscribe to my channel to not miss any future videos on the topic. And in the meantime, let me recommend you watching the Tanstack Router series you can already find on my channel, since Start is just the server part on top of Tanstack Router, and the primitives will be pretty much the same anyway. With that said, thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye!